teaching counselees to pray biblically on this edition of Truth and Love. I'm Dale Johnson, and you're listening to Truth and Love, a podcast of the Association of Certified Biblical Counselors, where we seek to provide biblical solutions to the problems that people face. This week on the podcast, I have with me one of my dear friends, Brian Gaines. He was one of my pastors when I lived in Texas, and he served at Grace Community Church in Glen Rose, Texas for 19 years as pastor of leadership and discipleship. In 2008, he started Grace Biblical Counseling, and he's a regular speaker and contributor to the cbcd.org. He's married to his wonderful wife, Laura, now for 23 years. They have four children, ages four to 17, and when not engaged in the ministry, he enjoys music hunting and mountain biking with his family. Uh, Brian, listen, I'm so grateful that you're here talking about this really important subject of teaching our counselees how to pray. So thank you for for being here with us. It's a pleasure to be here, Dale. Now, as we get started talking about this issue of helping our counselees learn to pray, learn to pray in a certain way, learn to pray biblically, help our listeners understand uh, you did a workshop recently at our annual conference on this subject. Help our our listeners understand how this workshop, Teaching Counselees to Pray Biblically, relates directly to being biblical in the way that we counsel. Yeah, I think uh, John Bunyan may have summarized that pretty well for us. Uh, He said, you can do more than pray after you have prayed, but you cannot do more than pray until you have prayed. So as we're working with others, prayer is just absolutely essential. It's vital. It needs to start off what we do, depending upon the Lord, as well as as to the process of the counseling and following up with the counseling. uh, Prayer certainly needs to to be throughout that whole process. And to be biblical in counseling, we see in the Bible various places that connect the word in prayer. Jesus himself in the high priestly prayer, John 17, 17, said, sanctify them in the truth your word is truth. And so as he's praying for those that the Lord would give to him, he's praying that they would be set apart, that they would be conformed to his image, that they would come to delight in him. And he's praying that they would do that ultimately through the word. And of course, before Jesus would ascend, uh, he mentioned that the, the counselor, capital C counselor, he would send and the counselor convicts the world of sin, it guides uh, believers into truth. And so we see the importance of, of prayer and the word dependent upon the Holy Spirit to, to grant illumination and understanding. You know, some of those key passages and, and key life issues, uh, many people struggle with anxiety. Right, and so we'll take them to Philippians four six. Do not be anxious about anything. A, a common, a common struggle. Uh, Jesus in Matthew six three times says, "Do not be anxious." And yet, as we see, uh, not only the command not to be anxious. Uh, how do we? How do we seek not to be anxious? Philippians four six. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication present your request to the Lord. And so it's it's through prayer. As we understand the, the word of the Lord, the will of God, we humbly, dependently go before him, trusting in him uh, to grant us, to lead us uh, what is needed in order to, to not be anxious. And you know, one of the passages we covered in that breakout workshop there at ACBC was Colossians 1.9. And Paul, it's so wonderful. He tells them uh, what God would, would have them to do. He reminds them of who God is. But as he opens some of those pastoral letters, he starts out by praying for them. And in Colossians 1, uh, 9 through 14, he records one of those prayers for them to encourage them. And in that prayer, he starts out praying that they would be filled with the knowledge of God's will with all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And that's what we want for those we help, that they would be filled to the point of overflowing, controlled by God's word. And, and so certainly uh, prayer and the word always go hand in hand. If we have the word apart from prayer, we, we can have somebody who becomes a Pharisee. Um, and so very important that the word is coupled with prayer that keeps us humbly dependent upon the Lord. Yeah, I love that. Now, throughout scripture, we see maybe model prayers, we would call it. We, we hear the call for us to pray. Jesus even is asked by his disciples to teach them to pray. Jesus models what that prayer looks like. So we see these prayers. We see the call to prayer. We even see the call to pray without ceasing. Help us understand what it looks like to pray without ceasing and how we help our counselees with that. 
Yeah, and that's so important. And that can immediately be discouraging for so many people. If you have a guy who comes to you and he's working 60 hours a week and, and you open up a text, pray without ceasing. Uh, how am I going to do that? Last week, my wife was interacting with a lady. She has four kids, ages four and under. How is there time to, to pray without ceasing? And so part of that is understanding what that actually looks like. You know, if you have four kids, if you're working 60 or plus hours a week, that's actually a reason to pray without ceasing, right? Because we need to look to the Lord for his strength. We need to look to the Lord uh, for the wisdom, the grace, uh, the patience to do those things that he's called us to do. I think John MacArthur really summarized this well, what it means to pray without ceasing. Uh, twofold, we need to have a God consciousness as well as a, a people consciousness. And so we, we know a favorite verse in counseling, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, where you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. And if we're going to be able to do that, we have to look to him. We need to have the awareness that one, he is worthy. Uh, two, he enables us to his spirit to do that, which he's called us to do. And then apart from him, we can do nothing. And, and yet in him, Philippians 4.13, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so a God awareness also to pray without ceasing involves a people awareness. If we're going to glorify God in all things, that means we are to, to love others as God has called us. And so we need to, to know uh, where other people are at, what they're struggling with, how to pray for them. Colossians 4.2 says to devote yourselves to prayer. Further in Colossians, in uh, verse 12, we see Epaphras, and he's struggling in prayer for those there that they would know God and know God's will. Yeah, I forget who said this, Dale, but, but years ago I heard somebody say this, uh, if you love someone, you will pray for them. And the more you pray for them, the more you will love them. And I think that is so true. Yeah, I love that. And the way you're turning us toward God consciousness, that idea of just in everything we do and everything we say, it's making a statement about God, what we're thinking about God and the ways in which we act, how we respond to people. That is a constant God awareness. We might call it a Godward orientation. You're teaching your counselees to have that type of Godward orientation and then to know where their help comes from in the matters in which they, that they deal with in daily life. So I think that's really critical to give them that posture. Now, as we talk a little bit more about some practical ways, what are some practical ways that, that you try and help others to learn how to pray biblically in the counseling room? First John 5, 14 and 15, if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And if he hears us, we know that we have what we asked of him. And so we want to teach our counselees to, to pray as Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Your kingdom come, your will be done. And his will, his prescribed wills, one of the seminary professors laid forth very well, is, is written down in his word. And so God gives us his word that we may know him, that we may know how to relate to him. And his word is to be the, the content of our prayers, to direct our prayers. And so it's just praying the word. And so as we're, we're meeting with somebody, certainly to teach them to pray biblically, we want to model that, right? We want to start off our, our, our counseling times together, praying for the capital C counselor, the Holy Spirit, to guide us into our word, to convict us of sin, to show us the truths, to give us the enabling grace to live accordingly. And so we pray and we ask for his blessing. And then we, we certainly go to the word. We seek to understand the word prayerfully. And then we seek to apply the word prayerfully, that we would uh, be granted the humility to walk in a manner worthy of our calling. And so all these things require prayer. You know, I think in, in counseling, over the years of doing counseling, when I see things are perhaps not going as well as I think they should, uh, it's a reminder to me to, to pray. Uh, I, I would love just to be able to, to change people, <laughs> but I know I don't have the power. Only God can. And so again, it's a constant reminder to, to pray, Lord, would you be so merciful? Would you pour out your grace? And so we, we pray for others in that way. And oftentimes, even in formal counseling, uh, it may be in a session and, and there may be some sins that need to confess and it may be appropriate even right then and right now just to, to stop. Okay, you've acknowledged these things before God. You've acknowledged these things before man. Can we take time and just to confess these before the Lord and seek his forgiveness? Or somebody's struggling, can we just take time? Can I pray with you right now? It's, it's tempting just to give them, okay, here's, here's your homework. Go do this. But we need to give them the homework and and do this prayerfully. And can I pray for you as you go? 
and to, to pray for them, to pray with them, and to encourage them to remain in prayer. You know, Dale, one thing that uh, a beloved brother of ours, uh, Dan Kirk, uh, shared with with us at a family treat years ago was a prayer journal. And we talked about unceasing prayer there in Colossians 1.9. Uh, this prayer journal was, was super helpful in that he had acts, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication, and with each of those, just scripture passages that were related to that, and, and he would pray through those, and that would guide his time there. But when it came to supplication, uh, you know, how many people have have asked us to pray for them? And we said, yes, I'll pray for you. And the reality of it is we got busy and we forgot. We had good intentions, but we actually didn't pray for them. And so a prayer journal, you can write down people's names. You can write down what they ask you to pray. And in doing so, thinking through what is God's will for this person in light of that? What has God said about this particular situation? What are the promise of God? Who is God in the midst of their struggle? And we can write down those passages and pray for them in light of those things. And then when we have the opportunity to dialogue with them again, we have prayed for them. We've prayed the will of God for them, and we can encourage them with what we've prayed for them. And we can even pray those passages with them. And in so doing, we're modeling what it means to pray biblically. And we're teaching them how to be dependent, Brian. Listen, as you're talking, I'm just thinking about how easy it is for us to drift from the core of who we are and what we do and, and what we believe to be the power that God has given us to change. And it's not ourselves. And prayer is just a constant demonstration. And listen, it's no wonder that integrationists and secularists think that the power of prayer and the work of the Holy Spirit is inadequate to to do this job of changing or it needs to be more relevant and modern and that sort of thing. We need to get back to these basics that God has given and trust, put ourselves in a disposition of trust upon, as you said, the big C counselor, the work of the Holy Spirit, as we call out to him in prayer. This is a means, the method by which he, he calls us to. And Lord, I pray that we not forget that as biblical counselors, we cannot abandon this as a primary part of who we are and the work we've been called to do in teaching our counselees how to call out to the Lord because he is our help, very present help in time of need. Brother, thank you for this great reminder, walking us through very practical ways, how to get our minds set back on the things of the Lord. Thank you, brother. You're listening to Truth and Love, a podcast of ACBC. You know, I can't think of a more appropriate thing for us to start the new year with, us learning how to teach our counselees to pray. I know oftentimes prayer is looked at in some circles as maybe not being as effective or we diminish the power of prayer. I think it's so critical and important. We as biblical counselors should never back off of our opportunities to call upon the creator of the universe to help in our time of need. The scriptures makes very clear that he is our refuge, our rock, our very present help in trouble. And we're to call out to him. He's a father who cares. And I'm so grateful to Brian for being with us this week to help us to think through that, that this needs to be a critical aspect of what we do and how we operate as biblical counselors. Now, I want to take an opportunity just very quickly to remind you about our pastor's retreat, Refuge, where we are encouraging pastors who are, are experiencing burnout and difficulty in ministry. Uh, we started this last year in 2022, and we're, we're doing this again in 2023, May one through three in uh, Asheville, North Carolina at Ridgecrest Conference Center. And we're looking forward to having pastors and their wives who are struggling. We want to make sure that we offer counseling to them. And so our applications uh, closed down on January the 20th. And so if you're thinking of a pastor who could use a retreat, a refuge, uh, like what we've described, uh, please have them fill out an application. We're going to close those down January the 20th and make selections very soon and look forward to our time together May 1 through 3. So if you need more information on Refuge, a retreat for pastors and their wives, please go to our website, biblicalcounseling.com. <music>